Welcome, visitor, to where Spartan boys become Spartan men. My name is Leonidas. I am a king of Sparta. But do not think me some idle aristocrat softened by luxury. When Spartans go to war, I stand alongside them, shield to shield. And my spear tastes the same blood as those of my men. I can't help but be reminded of the boy I used to be. I wonder what that boy would think if he saw me today. Would he be proud? Intimidated? Or would he pity the tired old man standing in front of him? But such thoughts are meaningless. Let us move on. The Agogi was Sparta's strict education system. The strenuous regimen took in the young boys, and then reshaped them until nothing was left but the strength, intelligence, and resolve of a perfect Spartan citizen. I will find you once your visit has ended, and we will talk further. Until then, visitor. Sparta was a Greek city located in the Peloponnese. It differed from other cities of the time in that it had no walls. Sparta originated as four neighboring villages, Patani, Limnes, Mizoa, and Sinisora, all of which shared the same political, military, and religious life. After two wars with the Mycenaeans, the city's territory expanded even further. By the 5th century BCE, they allegedly controlled almost half of the Peloponnese. The Agoge was the military training and education program undergone by Sparta's male youth. Grooming men for war was one of the city's main priorities. Boys began their training at the young age of seven and completed it when they were 30. It has been said that Spartan infants were inspected for weakness shortly after birth. If they were deemed too sickly, they were thrown into chasms. However, this information remains unproven. The healthy boys were considered suitable for training. When they came of age, they were removed from their families and were placed into service of the state. Their education included subjects like reading, writing, and even music, but was mostly focused on tough military exercises meant to turn the boys into efficient soldiers. The Agoge was divided into three cycles, one for boys aged 7 to 12, one for adolescents aged 12 to 20, and one for men aged 20 to 30. Each cycle included different exercises for refining the body and mind. Sparta played a large role in defeating the Persians during the Greco-Persian Wars in the 5th century BCE. They held their King Leonidas' glorious death at the Battle of Thermopylae in particularly high esteem. Because Leonidas was killed in battle, Sparta believed he died a good death and showed incredible bravery, qualities to be held as a model for all Spartans. This idealized bravery was embedded in the city's collective memory and was the main quality people strove for in the Agoge. Thank you. 
The first cycle of the agoge focused on boys aged 7 to 12. Each of the boys had shaved heads and wore light clothing. They walked everywhere barefoot, swam the Erotus River all year long, slept on reeds, and participated in cult rituals for Artemis or Thea. The boys were grouped into herds, or agoli, and were supervised by older adolescents. Once they reached the age of 12, they entered the second cycle of the agoge, which aimed to integrate them into the society of citizen soldiers. The Agoge's second cycle included boys aged 12 to 20. When they reached the age of 20, the young men were dubbed Erenes and could officially serve as hoplites in the Spartan army. Until the age of 30, Spartan men lived in communal mess halls called Suskenia. From the age of 22 onward, they were permitted to start a family, but 30 was viewed as a more appropriate age to get married. Spartan men served in the military until they turned 60, when they were designated as elders, or garantes. However, many were known to continue serving anyway, such as King Archimedes III, who fought in the army until he was killed in battle at the age of 62. All adult male Spartans participated in communal meals called Susitia. The attending Spartans contributed different kinds of food on a monthly basis, in addition to a small sum of money to pay for meat. Each man was entitled to one portion of a meal, with the exception of the kings, who received two portions. Susitia attendance was mandatory for every Spartan fortunate enough to be part of the group. The meals had great political significance. According to Xenophon and Plutarch, the Sicidia was designed to foster a sense of equality between citizens. It also demonstrated the self-restraint and moderation of Spartan society. But in reality, the Sicidia only increased the differentiation between the rich and the poor. Those who could not afford to contribute to the communal food not only missed their meals, but also lost their right of citizenship. Your tour has ended. As you have seen, the Arogi was not for the weak or faint of heart, but it did its job in producing skilled warriors and shrewd citizens. What else would you like to do? So you think you are ready for a test? Very well. Let us see how you fare. First, a simple question. The Agogi was made up of how many cycles? Correct. The Agogi was divided into three cycles. One for boys, aged 7 to 12, one for adolescents, aged 12 to 20, and one for men, aged 20 to 30. Next question. How many meal portions were kings entitled to at Sicitia? Yes, Spartan kings had the right to double portions. One final question. When were Spartans allowed to grow mustaches? Yes. Once a Spartan man was over 30, he was allowed to adorn his face with a glorious display of manhood. Impressive, visitor. You should be proud. Okay. 
safe travels, visitor. <laughs>